What if there was one marker that could tell you how healthy and recovered you are? There are actually two that you can measure every day. They are low resting heart rate and a high heart rate variability or HRV. Having these markers optimized will improve your stress resilience, physical performance, fitness and longevity. I've measured my HRV with many different devices. The Aura Ring, the 8 Sleep Mattress and the Whoop Wristband. They all show that my HRV is usually over 100 and my resting heart rate is below 40. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to lower your resting heart rate and increase your HRV. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. There's a saying that you only have a certain amount of heartbeats in your life, meaning that an excessively fast heartbeat would lead you closer to your death. If you look at the studies, then there is some truth to this. People with a higher resting heart rate have a higher risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease, independent of physical fitness and other cardiovascular disease risk factors. The average person's heart beats by about 60 to 100 beats per minute which is already too high and in the high risk category. A 2016 meta-analysis that included 1.2 million people found that compared to 45 beats per minute, every 10 beats per minute increment was linked to a 9% higher risk of all-cause mortality and 8% higher risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. Individuals with a resting heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute had a 12% higher risk of all-cause mortality and 8% for cardiovascular disease mortality. Those with a resting heart rate above 80 had a 45% higher risk of all-cause mortality and 33% for cardiovascular disease mortality. Remember that the average person's heart beats by about 60 to 100 beats per minute. That is already linked to a 12 to a 45% higher risk of mortality compared to having your heart beat by 45 beats per minute. So based on the data, having a resting heart rate that's already above 45 is linked to a slightly higher risk of mortality. And ideally, you would want to keep it in the low 40s and possibly below 50. And this is not just for athletes. I've seen countless of people in their 60s and 70s who have a resting heart rate of 45 or 48. So it is possible to achieve for everyone. A higher resting heart rate is a marker of an imbalanced nervous system and vagal tone, which plays a key role in many adverse health conditions. A high resting heart rate directly promotes atherosclerosis, arterial stiffness, myocardial ischemia, hypertension, and arrhythmias. So what are the things that increase your resting heart rate? You would want to avoid and minimize these. A high body mass index and being overweight. Sleeping less than 7 hours per night. Being sedentary and having poor cardiorespiratory fitness. Stressful life events. Job strain and stress. As you can see, there are quite a few things that you can control. Here are the things that lower your resting heart rate. These are the things you want to do more. Endurance exercise, especially zone 2 cardio after the training. A 2018 meta-analysis found that only endurance exercise and yoga were able to lower heart rate, whereas strength training didn't. Having a normal BMI below 25, even if you have muscle, too much mass will increase your heart rate because of the strain on the heart. Sauna therapy, intermittent fasting, sleeping 7-8 to eight hours, meditation, forest bathing and spending time in nature, listening to relaxing music, and holding the hand of a loved one or hugging. Probably the things that lower your resting heart rate the most have to do with your body weight, your stress levels and exercise. If you do moderate amounts of exercise, you keep a normal body weight and you manage your stress, then your resting heart rate will surely decrease. You know I talk a lot about the longevity benefits of the sauna on this channel. Using the sauna over 4 times a week compared to 2-3 to three times is linked with a 63% lower risk of heart disease mortality, 46% lower risk of hypertension and 40% reduced all-cause mortality. It's also linked to a 65% lower risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Those are quite incredible numbers. In my opinion, using the sauna is the second most powerful thing after exercise for your longevity. The sauna actually mimics a lot of the benefits of exercise by giving you a mild cardiovascular workout, increasing body temperature, as well as making you excrete out microplastics, xenoestrogens, heavy metals, and the so-called forever chemicals. I'm from Estonia, so there's a lot of saunas everywhere. However, they're not that common in the US or UK. Fortunately, infrared sauna blankets are about 10 times cheaper than a regular sauna, and they give the same benefits in terms of sweating and the heat. I'm using the Bond Charge infrared sauna blanket almost every day. It heats up in less than 5 minutes to 70 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature used in studies, and it fits under my bed. The Bond Charge blankets are also low in EMF, so you're not exposed to any radiation. You can get a 15% discount by heading to bondcharge.com for seamlund and by using the code seam. Alright, back to the video. Let's move on with heart rate variability or HRV. Heart rate variability describes the variation in heartbeats. Instead of your heart beating like a clock, there's variation between the heartbeats. 
and HRV measures those intervals. If the intervals between your heartbeat are consistent and repetitive, your HRV is low. With a greater variation between lengths, your HRV is higher. Generally, a higher HRV indicates being less stressed out and more recovered, being in a more parasympathetic state. But if your HRV is low, then that's a sign of more sympathetic activity, which refers to being stressed out. A low HRV typically corresponds with a higher resting heart rate because of the sympathetic activity, whereas having a higher HRV corresponds to a lower resting heart rate because of the parasympathetic activity. Lower HRV is associated with heart failure, cardiovascular disease, diabetic neuropathy, liver cirrhosis and higher mortality. A 2000 meta-analysis of 32 cohort studies found that compared with patients of cardiovascular disease with a high HRV, those with a low HRV had a 127% higher risk of all-cause mortality and a 41% increased risk of cardiovascular disease events. Low HRV is also a sign of aging because HRV declines with age. The general trend is HRV going down with age, except in extreme longevity. Centenarians and people who live into their 90s have a slightly higher HRV, which might explain why they're able to live so long. The average HRV in healthy adults is between 19 to 75 milliseconds in RMSSD. These numbers start decreasing in your 20s already. Athletes can have a HRV of up to 120 ms due to their good cardiorespiratory fitness. My own HRV is over 100 and in some days it's even up to 150. That's primarily because of my good fitness, lower body weight, taking a sauna, intermittent fasting and just managing my stress properly. HRV below 25 milliseconds is linked to higher risk factors for heart disease. Show HRV should be above 25 milliseconds for general health and optimally up to 120 milliseconds as an indicator of good cardiovascular function and fitness. But keep in mind that these numbers might vary between individuals. What matters more is that you're trying to improve your HRV number no matter where it's at right now. So if you start from a HRV of 35 for example, then you shouldn't compare yourself to someone who has a HRV above 100. What matters most is you trying to increase your HRV and ideally get up to 60, 70 or something like that depends on your potential. So how do you increase your HRV? In a very similar way, you would lower your resting heart rate. As your cardiovascular fitness and function improves, your heart will be beating slower and with a higher variability because it takes less effort and you're less stressed. Here are the things that have been shown to increase your HRV in studies. Endurance exercise and high intensity interval training. A 2021 systematic review on exercise and HRV found that while all exercise interventions improved secondary health factors, only endurance protocols improved HRV, whereas resistance training interventions didn't. You will see an improvement in your HRV no matter what type of training you do, but it seems that endurance exercise is superior to resistance training in terms of lowering resting heart rate and improving HRV. So if you see a plateau in your progress, you don't see any improvements in your heart rate or HRV, then you might need to do more cardio. Next, intermittent fasting for 16 hours increases HRV and lowers heart rate. Meditation, forest bathing, deep breathing exercise, music therapy, cold exposure, yoga, nasal breathing and walking also increase your HRV. From a dietary perspective, maintaining a normal body weight is the most important thing for your HRV. However, there are many studies finding that the Mediterranean diet is linked to a higher HRV. Here are the things that decrease your HRV. Worrying, emotional strain and stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, diabetes and high blood sugar levels, but also hypoglycemia and going too low blood sugar because of the stress. Metabolic syndrome, alcohol intake, poor sleep and sleep disorders, too much exercise and overtraining, getting sick or catching an infection, and having a high waist to hip ratio also decrease HRV. If there were to be just one thing that you track at home every day for your general health, then I would suggest that it should be HRV and your resting heart rate. So technically it's two markers, but because these two interact with each other so much, then you can think of them almost as a, like a single marker, having a lower resting heart rate and a higher HRV. Today, there are many commercially available activity trackers and monitors that track your HRE and resting heart rate during sleep. While the sleep data can be often not accurate, then the HRV and heart rate tracking is very reliable and accurate. If you want to know how to exercise for longevity, then check out my recent video where I outline my evidence-based weekly workout plan for longevity. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.